The thing about the creator and filmmaking industry is that it's very easy to get caught up in teams. Team Canon, Team Sony, Team Nikon, Team Windows, Team Apple, Team Premiere Pro, Team Final Cut Pro, and Team DaVinci Resolve. Now today we're going to be making a switch from our normal DaVinci Resolve content and talking about Premiere Pro. Now, if you're new to the channel, my thoughts have always been that Premiere Pro is a great editing program, but when it comes to color grading, it's color management and color tools are lacking. And I've often felt that you're doing yourself a disservice if you're shooting with some of these great cameras with great color profiles and codecs and you aren't taking full advantage of that in DaVinci Resolve. That being said, I understand as a creator, especially as a solo creator too, if you don't necessarily feel like taking the time to learn a new program or edit in your program and round trip in DaVinci Resolve to do the color grading. And round tripping also can give you a couple of headaches. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about how you can get better color management and better color results out of Premiere Pro with one of my favorite tools called Cinematch. Now, before we get into this video, I'm all about transparency and disclosures. This video is sponsored by Cinematch. Yes, they did pay me, and they have been paying me over the past few years. That being said, I was rocking with this plugin before they even knew I existed when it came out and I was using it on a secret YouTube channel that we're not going to be talking about today. My whole thing is I keep it real with y'all. I ain't gonna risk my integrity for the sake of a paycheck. You pay me for my opinion. You can't buy my opinion. That being said, we need to hit on color management real quick so we can really understand the limitations that I feel Premiere Pro brings to the table with respect to managing your color. To put it simply, color management is a process of making sure that your color grading results are consistent across multiple different devices. That's the very dictionary term of that. Now, in practice, what this looks like for us is actually taking the profile that our camera shot in, such as Airy Log C or the red wide gamut in Log 3G10, and then transforming that into a wide color space that is our working color space, something like the DaVinci Wide Gamut or Rec 2020 or P3. And then we output that color space to whatever our monitor is going to be capable of that we're using, and that should also also match whatever our format is that we need to deliver to. So if we are exporting to HDR, then we need to have an HDR capable monitor and those profiles for our output color space in our program need to match what is set to the monitor. That's what it looks like in practice. Now, color management has taken on multiple different forms over the years. One of the most notable ones is ASIS by the Academy of Motion Pictures. This stands for the Academy Color Encoding System. Now, this is actually available in Adobe After Effects, but it's not available in Premiere Pro, which is a disservice. The goal of ASUS was to create a seamless motion picture exchange between many different devices, unify them in a color space, and export them. This made things like camera matching easier and allowed for very consistent results when working on multi-camera projects when you were shooting in bigger productions. Now, this is where Premiere Pro's limitations come in. We don't have the option to take our camera's color space, such as airy wide gamut or the red wide gamut, right? And transform that into a working color space and then bring it into our displays color space. We're really left with one option in Premiere Pro, which is LUTs. Now there's nothing wrong with using LUTs. However, we're very limited with respect to the tools we have in the Lumetri color panel of Premiere Pro because the tools don't quite function in a linear fashion. And when I say a linear fashion, because this is a non-linear your editor, so is DaVinci Resolve. What I mean is, is that it doesn't function in a way that would feel like natural camera adjustments to the extent that you can reproduce that in an editor. Now, this is where Cinematch comes in. This is my personal favorite method of managing my color in Premiere Pro in the off chance that a client insists that I must use this particular NLE. Cinematch doesn't just have access to the input color spaces of all of the camera profiles available in the plugin. I'm talking things like Airy Log C, the Sony S gamut, and the Red Wide gamut. What they've also done with each and every camera available 
in the plugin is that they've actually profiled the color of the sensor. So now we're actually talking about the color science, right? Because color science is a color space in gamma plus sensor calibration. So that is the in-between step that Cinematch is taking when it is transforming into the output color space that you have selected in the color management tab of the plugin. And also when it comes to being able to match a camera such as a Sony camera with a Nikon camera or a Sony camera or Canon camera with a Blackmagic camera. I'm going to show you the difference between adjustments made in Lumetri Color and Cinematch and how Cinematch matches results more closely reflect those that I would get when I'm working in a professional color grading NLE such as DaVinci Resolve. So when we go into Premiere Pro what you can see here is that we have two of the same clips that are shot on red helium in the red wide gamut in Log 3G10. I'm going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer in our media pool and drag it onto the timeline over both clips. Now this adjustment layer is where we're going to be doing our color grading. On the first clip I'm simply going to go into Lumetri Color and I'm going to select our red wide gamut log 3G10 LUT so that we can get into Rec 709. And on our second clip, I'm going to go into Cinematch. I'm going to select the camera manufacturer as red. I'm going to select red helium as our camera of choice. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the red wide gamut in log 3G10 as that's the profile that we shot it. Now when we're looking at these off the bat, they're pretty similar. Here's where the power of Cinematch comes in. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to our first clip and in Lumetri Color, I'm going to increase the exposure by 2.7. Now I'm going to go ahead and move over to Cinematch and I'm also going to increase the exposure in that tab by 2.7. Now the difference is subtle, but the Cinematch adjustment one produces less noise and two also maintains the original characteristics of the camera on what it would look like if we were to actually increase the exposure in camera. Now because I'm using red footage here, I can use the power of Red Code RAW to show you what an adjustment would look like if we were to change the RAW settings by making a third clip and going into the settings tab of that clip where we get our camera raw settings and increasing the exposure there also by 2.7 and comparing the results between the Cinematch clip where we adjusted it and the clip where we just adjusted the red code raw settings themselves. And as we can see, these results match. And the reason for that is again because of Cinematch's camera profiling. Now while we can make this adjustment in the raw tab itself, a lot of you guys aren't out here shooting raw and the rest of the tools in Lumetri Color also function in this funky way where they're not quite making the best organic adjustments versus the adjustments that we can make using the curves tool in Cinematch or the adjustments that we could be making in the shadows, midtones, and highlights in the color wheels tools of Cinematch. Those are going to be much more organic overall. Now, like I said, I keep it real with y'all. I'm not here to try to push this as a one-stop solution for color grading in Premiere Pro. I'm a big advocate of using all the tools available to you. You can actually take this adjustment layer track, move it up a track, and then put another adjustment layer below that. And there, if you would like to use some of the tools within Lumetri Color, such as the color wheels or the creative LUT section, you can go ahead and do that. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making that adjustment to the log before we go ahead and transform into Rec 709. Or you could go ahead and use the color tools in Cinematch if you prefer those. It's just another tool that you can use to get better basic adjustment corrections, which is very foundational when it comes to setting up the tonality of your look in color grading. And even if we do get better color management in Premiere Pro, or we even get Aces, Cinematch is still going to be light years ahead when it comes to camera matching, thanks to that sensor profiling. In the description down below, you guys can find a link for 20% off of Cinematch. I've also left my code just in case the link does not apply the discount. You can also use these links to get 20% off of Film Convert or bundle the two. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below and leave me a comment down below letting me know your favorite editor. Yeah, let's do that. And now more than ever, friends, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. I'm Sydney. I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.